Yeah, generally I try to market the cheapest way to the highest way. So we might do a ringless voicemail drop first, then we might do a text message, then we might do a cold call, then we might do a, okay. uh, you know, depending on the situation, an email, all the way up to snail mail, all the way up to knocking on the door. So it just depends on every case is different. So whatever it takes to get the job done is the real answer. You know, whatever it takes, we need an answer for them first. Do they even want to sell? Because we don't know if everybody we come across even wants to sell. They may just be, you know, well, I'll sell it if you give me the right price. They ain't really motivated. When people start talking like that, you know, you know, I'm looking for a problem to solve. So when people got divorces, bankruptcies, uh, issues, child support, baby mama drama, issues, problems, death, you know, stuff. That's the stuff that's going to, you're going to yield your biggest results. Because you're solving a problem for somebody, not just. I want to sell my house. Because if somebody just want to sell their house, they can go put it on the MLS, right? Mm -hmm. They don't even need you at that point. So you're looking for people that, you know, that you can actually add in some value to. Okay. Hold on. Let me see. So that's the biggest thing, you know. So every case is different, you know. When they want to sell it, get the information about the house. Have you ever just thought about listening with a real estate agent? I ask them that because I'm not trying to make them give me their house. I give them all of their options. It's up to them to decide which option works best for them. I can give them. See, I'm not just there to buy their house. I'm there to become a trusted advisor, whether they sell me their house or not. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Everything you come across ain't going to be a deal. That's why it's so important to keep your marketing up, to keep leads coming in, because most of the stuff you come across, you can't do nothing with. If you're doing only wholesaling, 95% of the stuff you come across, you can't do nothing with. It's not saying you can't. There is a few that's going to say yes, and I'll take that low ball offer, or they don't care. Just get it out of my life. Just take my house. But you can, it's, it's only to a point. If they got to come out of pocket, now that's a problem. But if you got it to where they're going to be getting some money, or you're solving their problem. It's not always just about getting somebody money all the time. Money can be a factor, but that's why I say it's best for to get on the phone with these people we're about to call in a moment to see, you know, what options are best for them. Gotcha. Okay, hold on. So it's five twenty-three. Give me one moment. I am going to call her. So just a moment. All right. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, Chris Monroe, and we're about to call the seller and lock her down on the phone, yo. So go ahead and give this video a like. Give it a share right down at the bottom, though, if you care. Share it out to somebody who like this real estate talk, who want to know how to talk on the phone to sellers. Never seen the house. Never seen the seller. Ain't even seen the buyer yet, but we finna see if we can get them on the phone. I'm helping somebody work on a deal here. So give me that thumbs up, give me that like, and that share. That'll be great of you. That's the price of admission. That's all I ask. Hello? Hello? Share it out if you carry it out. She's calling them on a three-way right now. So we can, uh, it's going to be a husband, a wife, and her. So we're going to be party deep on this phone. I don't know if it's going to come out to be a deal or not, but we're going to try. ARV is about three twenty. They owe two eighty. Monthly payments about twenty one hundred a month. PITI, principal interest, taxes and insurance. And what else is going on with the house is in perfect condition. The house is about a year old. Built in twenty eighteen. Brand new house. Ain't been slept in a whole year almost yet. That's the kind of house you want. Brand new. So hope this video provides you some value. Hopefully this seller give me some pushback so you can see how I handle some objections. Right on the fly, right here live. You got to like it. So turn on those post notifications if you're following here on Instagram as well. At Chris Monroe STL. Because you never know when I go live. Yes, I'm here. Okay, you here? And I'm just here too? Yep. Okay, perfect. So we have Nisha 
on the phone. We have Andrew on the phone. I am here, and then we have Chris here. Chris, here we go here. So, um, um, what we're going to do is we have all your information pulled up. I do have the questions that you sent through to me earlier, and that just, um, I mean, anything that you guys have or concerns or questions about, just go right ahead. So, hello, everybody. How are you? Great, great. Just watching this snow fall out of nowhere. Um, so I, uh, I just wanted to let you all know. So basically uh, what we do is buy houses for cash in any condition, regardless of how much you owe. And so we basically try to formulate, you know, something to try to solve the problem for people when they, you know, have a problem of trying to sell a house. So um, I guess she has sent you over some uh, information about us already. And I guess you had a couple of questions or something for me. Basically, uh, what we look to do, what we really aim to do is to buy your house. You know, leasing it is an option, which, which she sent you over, just so you can review. That is an option. However, um, our, our main position is we're looking to actually buy your house, where we actually close through a real estate attorney. So everything's disclosed and in writing. We would actually uh, be responsible for all of the maintenance and repairs for the property going forward. So you would get no calls about tenants, toilets, termites, any issues. We would cover the insurance as well and as well as the taxes on the property. So basically we remove all problems in regards to that house from your plate when we buy your house. So that's really the position we really would like to be in is the one to buy your house. We would, uh, we would buy it and cover that monthly payment for you. Uh, until sometime in the future, our main goal is to get the house and uh, get. We have people that we work with that are ne necessarily not able to qualify for a loan at this time, so we try to help them out, get their situation together. Whether it's um, debt to income ratio, time on the job, their credit score, different things like that, maybe holding people back from actually qualifying for a loan. But with a little bit of help from us. We try to help them get approved to get a loan to cash out the property at that time. That's basically where we're going to make money in the deal. And uh, we cash out the deal and get the whole uh, mortgage out of your name and everything. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and I guess that's kind of the, one of the questions that I had, at least for clarification. The option one that I saw on the, the offer was a $200,000 cash offer with 60000 in closing. That that sixty thousand in closing could be taken out of our cash offer. What what that looks like to me, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but what it looks like to me, and the reason why the lease option for starters is is at least striking me as more attractive, is that if we take that sixty thousand out of our cash, that leaves us with one hundred and forty thousand dollars. We owe two eighty, so that would leave me with a hundred and leave us with one hundred and forty thousand dollars that we still owe on a loan for a house we no longer have, you know what I mean? So yeah, I didn't get to see exactly what you got in writing, but basically option one, if we were to buy your house for cash, as is, uh, clean, buy it, pay, you know, the thing is you would have to bring about 60000 or however much the difference is from your right. loan to do that deal. I don't know how if that was written yeah. up that way or not, but that's basically what option right. one would be. You would be bringing money to closing to actually sell your house, which isn't the best option, but however, it is an option. So that's why that's why I was right. sent over right. to you. So um, if yeah. we were to buy your house, we would that's buy it for 200000 Whatever that difference is above that that you owe, you would have to bring that amount of money to closing to actually cash out of the house to be done with yeah, it. So that yeah, that, that, that won't be an option. Um, 
So. No, I mean, we're trying to get out of this house clean uh, to where we basically just don't have the monthly payment anymore. So taking an almost $100,000 loss on it, that's not going to happen. Exactly. All right, so this, yeah. is my, this is what I want to clear up, right? So Andrew, your question was, is if you were to take a cash offer, you were saying that you would have, a, or like there is, a, you would owe something. You wouldn't owe anything if you did a cash offer. So I think that, that is what your question was, is that you were concerned that once you accept the cash offer, and yes, you would have 140 after paying the 60 for closing because you have to mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. order for that's us not, to that's take not right. the house. Uh-uh, that's not right. So, so basically, if we buy your house for cash for two hundred thousand, whatever you owe over that two hundred thousand, you would have to bring in cash to closing to make that happen. If that's not an option, we're almost done talking about that option. <laughs> I don't want to put y'all down a rabbit hole to make it difficult. I want to make it easy yeah. for everybody. So basically, that's not an option. So, but we just want to let you know that's what we would offer. Yeah, let's take option one off the table. Okay, so as far as option, another option, like I said, we will be interested in actually buying your house. We will typically pay the closing costs as well so that you will not have to come out of pocket for anything. Uh, the only thing is that the loan will stay in your name temporarily until sometime in the future when we get it cashed out. And uh, like I said earlier, we typically try to get it cashed out sooner rather than later because that's basically where we make our money at on the back end when we get somebody qualified to cash it out. We'll make our money on it and you'll get cashed out of the deal and you don't have to deal with the house in the meantime, in between time. And you can go ahead and move on into, you know, whatever else you want to do in life without having to deal with that house. So then that's that's a question for option two is when you get when you're saying that you would buy, you would. You know, do the closing costs and essentially pay us out on the um, monthly payment that we have, and the agreed upon price would be two hundred eighty thousand dollars. That's that's what was in the offer. Um, let me ask you this: it, when when working that offer, um, when working that up, the monthly price that you would pay us out while it is still temporarily in our name that would be equal to what we owe, correct? That's correct. So yeah, we would write it up as a the, the we would write it up as a purchase price would be the loan balance. We would have the title company and the attorneys draw it up to make it so it all then because you know that balance changes every day because of escrows and all the other moving parts when it comes to loans. So they would draw it up to where it makes sense to where we would buy for the purchase price of the loan balance and uh, we would just take over that payment going forward and we would take over the responsibility of the maintenance and repairs of the house going forward. So basically removing you from all of the burden of the house, basically. And the reason why you would do it like that for the entire balance of the loan is because you're not giving us cash in hand, right? So you don't have so you're not having to come up with that entire lump sum of cash, which is why you would be willing to do it for the balance of the loan and essentially just be transferred to you in that case, right? That's correct. So yeah, they would draw up all of the legal documents to make it all make sense and make it so that, you know, you're protected in the deal and everything's disclosed in writing because we don't do anything, you know, over kitchen tables or anything slick. We always go through a real estate attorney. So everything's disclosed to protect us in the deal and to protect you in the deal. So everything's, you know, proper. Okay. So then just for simple terms, just so I can think about it, option two, we can just consider a transfer. So we would be just transferring the life, the financial liability and the property over you guys, and we would walk away clean. Yeah, and we typically would pay the closing costs as well, because with that size of a property, sure. um, it would probably be, you know, several grand in closing costs as well. Yeah, I think when we bought it, it was like five grand or something. Yeah, um, we would have to cover that expense. Remember. So we, we would actually come out of pocket to do the deal. It just wouldn't, you wouldn't have to come out of pocket to do anything. It would basically, we would make it to where it's a clean escape for you. Basically, you won't have to deal with that sure. house going forward. Sure. Now, with option three, and the reason why it's, it's kind of um, appealing uh, to me and to us is that if you guys were to lease it from us for a period of time with an option to buy, technically we still retain ownership of the property. But if after... Um, a lease term expires and maybe we re-up for another whatever lease term, two, three years, etc. We would still have the option to say, okay, with this next lease term, we're not going to renew the lease. We're going to reassume our property. Is that correct or do I have that wrong? Uh, that could be a case. That's correct. That could happen that way. But, okay. but typically we try to get them cashed out, you know, sooner so we can get, you know, get the deal done where we can get somebody in there that basically needs to qualify for a loan and 
you know, usually it take about a couple yeah. of a year or two to get somebody cleaned up. Most of the people we come across, even though you know, I don't want to tell you exactly a date to it, but you know. Now here's here's a question for you then. With this um, with this uh, lease with option to buy, if you move on your option to buy, are we in a position would we be contractually obligated to accept? Yes, the lease and the option is what we are actually would be. We would have an option to buy, to buy the house. So yes, you have, would have agreed to sell your house at that certain uh, agreement. That's correct. Okay, so within that period of time. Right, right. Within that, essentially within that lease period, and within that framework, um, would the lease payments that you would make to us then essentially match our monthly mortgage expense, including escrow and taxes, or uh, insurance and taxes and all that? Would, would it would it be equal to what I'm paying, Penny Max? Uh, approximately. I can check and see what the actual numbers would be. It would be approximately that amount. Okay. So in that scenario, there's a chance that we could actually, in, in option three, the lease scenario, there's a chance we could actually be losing money on a cash, like losing cash basically on a monthly basis because your lease payment to us might not be exactly what we're paying on our mortgage. Exactly. So that's why we don't want to make you lose. We want to help you win. So that's why we usually try to uh, do the other option of buying it. But these are just some options that you do have. So, you know, we just like to present people with multiple options and try to weigh out and see what works to make it a win-win situation. Absolutely. Um, let me ask you this, and just because our, um, our personal situation might dictate different dates, um, I don't know if it's going to be March 1st. I don't know if it's going to be April 1st. Uh, but is there a timeline for you for when this has to be done for this offer to remain valid? Or is this something where if we revisit this maybe in 30 days, um, work out a couple things on our end, the offer would still be on the table? So basically what we would do if we were to agree to everything, we would get the paperwork started. We would open escrow, and we would close on the date you all are ready. I mean, we can close in March if it's easier for you or, you know, sooner. You know, we try to work it out to make it an easy thing for you. So that's the whole thing. We, like I said, we want to make this, because it's already stressful moving, you know. Moving is one of the top five sure. things people hate to do in life. So we definitely don't want to make add more stress to you. We want to make this easy for you all so that you can, you know, move on and do whatever else you want to do in life going forward. Sure. What I'm driving at is, if we were to hold off on getting the paperwork started for two weeks, three weeks, a month, would the offer still be on the table for that option to transfer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. As I don't know if Yeah. Okay. I have to just be a quick topic. Okay. Because I personally, I have a business trip coming up for work. I'm going to have to be gone for about three weeks. So it's just kind of difficult for us to pull the trigger on this and then I'm gone for you know the last three weeks that I might be using to pack get ready that can be up in the house Yep. Yeah, because we want to give you time to go ahead and get everything moved and, you know, coordinate. Because, yeah. like I said, moving is difficult. So we're really flexible on a closing date. We just like to go ahead and get everything, you know, set up so we can put the funds to the side so that we know that this house is coming up. We can start our marketing, you know, so it's a clean transition to get everything, you know, just flowing just right and perfect. That's usually how we do it to make it, you know, like I said, easy for you all. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think what we are trying to what we're trying to get at is that, you know, with this business trip and with my job and everything, we wouldn't be signing any paperwork and accepting this offer until 30 days from now. Would that it. offer still stand 30 yeah. days from now? Yeah, you should, be, yeah, you should yeah. be good to go. Yeah. I mean, that should be fine. So even though we're in a position, and of course we like to know if, if, as soon as you know, but I understand if you have something you have to do and it this makes more sense for you to do all of that and come back to us, it. there's no expiration date on our offer. So you do not have to accept it by a third time. I wish she um, wouldn't be saying but, this. I'll tell her that's after the you know, phone call. When you come back or she don't need to tell them all of that. Whatever, Stop promising We can stuff. absolutely pick back up here and we can get everything done in a timely fashion for you. Never promise. That's, okay. that's really that's really the, the, the point of the question. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that because, yeah, it, it, everyone has their own story. Phone. Everyone has their own things going on. Yeah. Um, and it always just makes me a little nervous when people say, well, if you don't accept in the next, you know, two minutes. Um, <laughs> oh, so, yeah, you so know. That's, that's really good to hear. <laughs> 
Yeah, you don't have to accept in, a two, in two minutes or no. anything. We just like to, you know, make sure that everything's ironed out. You all understand everything. Uh, like I said, everything we're saying now is be in writing. Uh, you'll be protected in the deal. We have everything closed through a real estate attorney and through the title company here. So everything's disclosed. There's no okay. surprises. There's no gotchas. So, okay. Let me ask you. Uh, it's true. Well, here's a question real quick. Let's say, and this is a hypothetical, but it, and this is because we've had certain times, certain experiences where we've literally had to move our entire life in one day, and that's not very fun. Um, yeah, if, we yeah. Were to, yeah, no, if we were to put our names uh, on the contract, you know, the ink dries and everything, is there a period of time between then and when you guys assume the property that we'd have to, you know, yeah, we will set that up. Like I said, we're really flexible. We can close when you're ready, and we work with you as far as timing on getting you out. And I even know movers, so you know we can we we solve all the problems. All I tell people all the time is bring me some problems. I have about 19 solutions. That you know I don't want to tell you that to bring me unnecessary problems, but that's how it is sometimes. Just sure. bring some problems. We got solutions to solve it, and so we try to make it easy for you to so you can move on to your next place and don't have to worry about this house anymore. Okay, and Drew, if I'm hearing you correctly, kind of, um, you're kind of leaning more towards option two. Do you have any other questions uh, in details about that? I know we've discussed option three at length, but that doesn't really sound like that's what we thought it was. So do you have any other questions yeah. for option two? Uh, for option two, um, I really don't, it's just because it's a uh, it's transference. It's, um, if I'm understanding that right, we're basically just, Walking away, just kind of washing our hands of it, and then uh, you know, being, being done. So, um, no, I actually don't have any. If I have any questions to clarify on option two, I'll definitely email. Yes, please do. Um, do you guys have any questions for us? And, and I guess while I'm thinking about it, just so I'm clear on option two, basically what it would be is you guys would just be paying the monthly payment for us on our behalf um, until such time that you sell it. Uh, to your buyers, in which case we get cashed out. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. And the whole time, we are the ones taking responsibility for the maintenance, repairs, taxes, insurance, anything to come on with that house. The only call you'll get from us is to say, how are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. And guess what? We're about to cash this house out. That's the only calls you get from us. Not about the house in, in regards to repairs or anything. And we should be able to ensure that that cash out balance would basically not leave us with any debt owed on the house. Just, you know, even a grand, two grand, wait. three grand, I really don't want to get that call where it's like, okay, I have to come up with $1,000. Wait, wait, wait. Nope, so. you'll be clean. You'll yeah, be cleared on. out. You'll be zeroed out from the property completely. So with this, just just so I know, because, you know, with this, this is new territory for us, um, when you assume the loan, you would essentially be paying penny max for us. And when you cash it out, that's what you're going to cash it out directly to you pay back. So, that's what it will do. so it will not be removed from our credit, basically, our credit report as an open loan until you guys cash it out. You will cash it out directly to Penny Max. You're not taking out an, an additional loan or anything yourselves. You're just assuming our loan. So, yeah. yeah, so basically we would just take over those payments going forward. That, uh, what is it, 2100 a month? Is that right? Twenty one seventy five and forty three cents. And that includes the principal interest taxes and insurance, correct? Okay. And there's no HOA fees or anything that I wasn't aware of there? Uh, there is an HOA fee of two hundred and fifty dollars a year that I just got in the mail today. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah two hundred and fifty a year. And um, that comes up every February first. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, we will cover all of that as well as the HOA fees. So all of those fees and costs and expenses, you don't have to worry about any of them. We remove all of that burden off of your shoulders, and you don't get any calls about the house. You just live your life until you get a call from us in the future saying we cashed it out. Congratulations, we got to the finish line. How's life going? Hope everything is well. Okay, and do we have some kind of guarantee that you guys will sell it? Or yeah, we have a guarantee that, that we don't like you guys, but we don't want to like be doing this in eight years. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, we'll be. Yeah, it'll be.
don't take that long. So, yeah, basically, uh, we guarantee to be responsible for all of the maintenance repairs for the property going forward. Um, there's, I mean, we'll be paying on that loan over that period of time as well. So, I mean, we, we're going to make it win. We, we don't have a choice because we're invested in it. We're coming out of money for it. We want to get our investment back. You know, we're, we're not in it for charitable parts. We're only in it, you know, because we're going to make money on it. And, there's, you know, I like to make sure people understand it so they don't feel like, oh, well, it sounds too good to be true. But, no, we're going to make money on it. There's no question about it. We're going to sell it for more than we're going to buy it for. It's just, you know, I don't know when that's going to happen. Yes, that's correct. I guess the other question I would have is uh, what does this, and maybe you guys don't know this, but what does this due to our credit when you guys are paying on the loan for us? Like, how does that affect us? Does it affect our credit negatively or... Well, the good thing is it'll actually affect your credit positively because it'll show every month on the first of the month an auto payment has came in and paid penny Mac. Yeah. Your mortgage is being paid, and you'll be like, wow, my credit score is going up, up, up and away, and I'm not even making any payments. So, you know, it's actually a good thing, you know. That's the only thing with it. It will stay in your name, though, and it will stay on your credit report until it gets cashed out. So I just want to make sure that's very clear. Right. So I think what, she, what you were trying to – I get your question, but it's a, it's pretty much answer. But, yeah, so as long as they see the payments being made on your behalf, right, they don't care. You know they don't care who makes the payments. As long as they're being made directly to your – you know, to that property on your behalf. All right. Did you have any other questions for me? Well, just to follow up on that, once it sells and we're cashed out of the house, then it would come off of our credit report because we would no longer own it. That's correct. Yep. That, that, that loan correct. will come out of your name. Penny Mac will say thank you. They'll be sending you letters trying to get you to get another loan with them. Pretty much, because they'll be like, these guys are bad. Like, they paid us off. <laughs> If anything, that should only positively affect us because it shows we paid off, you know, quote unquote, we paid off mm -hmm. a massive balance in a very short amount of time. Yes. Yep. So it's not going to harm you at all. Like, I would even propose something that would, you know, like, that doesn't make sense. Like, nobody needs that. Right. Okay, because it's not, it's not that I don't want to buy another house and maybe five or ten years. I just don't want this to negatively affect that going down the road. Right, and so that's why we're going to buy it in a uh, in a way that shows that you have um, uh, income coming in to pay that loan. You'll get a note. The, the, the real estate attorney is going to draw up a document that's going to show that you have something coming in to pay that debt. So you can use that possibly when you go to apply for a loan several years from now. So it washes out your debt-to-income ratio so that you can possibly qualify for a loan in the future. And uh, I'm going through this with you guys. Yeah. I'm sorry, what was that? Even during, even during the process of going through this with you guys, like let's say we do this with you guys, and in two years, God forbid, I haven't sold yet and I want to buy a house. That note would basically ensure I could still do so because it would wash out my debt income, correct? Yeah, so the, the real yeah, estate attorney is going to provide you with a document that just shows that you have an income coming in that washes out that payment that's supposed to be going out. So that will show that your debt to income ratio is not out of whack. It will show that, look, you don't own this house. It's being paid another way. Uh, okay. I think, I think last question for me is... Um, Oh, wow, I just had it. <laughs> it slipped away. <laughs> I, I remember it. I remember it. I'll get you an email. I hate when that happens. <laughs> like, I was just on the tip of my tongue. Um, no, I, no, I lost it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll it's going to come to you later. It's going to come to you later tonight or something. I'll be making, I'll be making dinner and be like, oh, yeah. No, you just email it to me, Andrew. That's what you do when it pops up. You just email it to me. Yes, so, yeah, so like I said, you're protected in the deal. That's why we close it through a real estate attorney, oh. so you don't have any, uh, you know, any problems. Did you get it? I got it. I got it. Okay. He, said, he said the magic word. He said attorney. Um, are, we, are we going to be able to review the documents before signing? Cause I, Absolutely. It, it, okay. <laughs> it, it always makes me nervous to, like, see documents for a first time at the signing. Yeah. No, 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 no. We're, we're not doing anything that you're not aware of. Every, everything is transparent. Everything, this entire 
um, all of this is about working for what works best for you. You will be able to see everything before you sign it. Like you, you can read it. Like we're not trying to hide anything. It's it'll be done legal and it'll be done proper. <laughs> yep, because there's some disclosures you would have to. There's some disclosures you would sign off on. Just letting you know, like I said, the loan was staying your name that type of stuff and you know everything's disclosed so that's why we that's why we do it through a real estate attorney so there's not like oh you tricked me or oh you didn't tell me this or oh it's all in writing you can review it yeah. think about it look at it smell it whatever you want <laughs> yeah absolutely okay. yeah. all right anything else you got for me um i don't have anything else right now uh, what, if, what about you what about you Nush? are you do you have any questions if, even if not now, you know how to get in touch with me. Please ask any questions. Yeah, um, definitely. I, I think I'm just going to, you know, do, do some thinking, do some talking, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, just kind of send you an email, send you some text, and we'll go from there. You got it. You got it. Well, thank you guys so much. It's a pleasure working with you guys. Um, I'm open if you need anything else from here. And, you know, if we need to take some time, don't feel pressure, you know, if we need to do this in a couple of weeks or whatever, that's fine. Absolutely fine. All right? You guys, you guys have a great night, and we'll be in touch, okay? Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. All right? All right. Bye-bye. Whoa, there was a lot of stuff on there. Did y'all like that? Was that good? Did you like it? Give us some thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a share if you care. So to recap, that house is like a brand new house. And here's the person I'm helping with the deal calling back right now. Let's see what she got to say. Hello, and thanks for calling. Yeah, so what do you think? I, um, the question is, what do you think? I... I mean, there's most definitely, there's some motivation there. I think they're going to be leaning more towards option two, of course. And it's just a matter of, uh, I think they're going to go with that option. Did you see how I redirected them back to buying the house? I ain't trying to lease nothing. I ain't leasing nothing from nobody. I want to no, buy No, I, 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 I noticed that because they were trying to hit at option three a, a little bit. But mm-hmm. I can't see how you got this part. Because ain't nobody in option three. Honestly... I almost deleted option three on them for real, but I just went on ahead and sent it. Yeah, um, you did, right? I mean, like, oh, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you, too. What did you put in option one? Something about a 60000 in closing costs or something. What was that? I put in there what you told me to put in there. I put in an offer to offer them 200000 and that they would have to pay. Like, they're going to have a $60,000 closing, right? And closing at the time of closing? Yeah, that, but I would let them. See, I wouldn't. I would, what I would have worded is just say, this is the price. Our cash offers 200000 and that's all cash, and we pay the closing costs, and we take the house as is. That's it. I let them do the math to figure out how much they got to bring to closing. See, I don't, I don't want to give them because the, that's where they, kept, that's where they got confused at. When they was like, "Oh, wait a minute, the sixty thousand and closing," I didn't want to get into that because I already knew that's probably not the option they're going to okay. take. I let them come to that conclusion. If I'm only offering you two hundred and you owe two eighty, you know you bring another eighty to the closing to get the house sold. I ain't got to tell you that. <laughs> if I got to tell you that, right. some man, you know what I'm saying? I don't. I try not to get into too deep into this stuff. I give a broad answer, and if they got questions, we get into the questions on the Q and A like we just did. Cause you see how I can handle every objection they throw at me right on the fly, just enough. I don't want to get too deep into over promising them this stuff and all. Oh, I'm gonna get it out your name in two years, and I ain't saying all that. Cause when you start saying that stuff and promising right. that stuff, that stuff come back to bite you in the butt later. I just give it a general thing right. of what our plan is. It's in our best interest to get the loan cashed out sooner rather than later. Not saying, oh, I'm going to get it cashed out in two years. Now, I've seen people do that and get themselves in a the booger. Think, so, you know. I think that, um, I think he talked her out of the cash offer because in his mind, in which he is, they're losing a lot of money. But I look at it like this decision was so dumb. <laughs> I mean, them going to buy a house, it's when you see it, it's just, it's just stupid. Like, it's so high priced over there. They don't like it. It's boring to them. They don't like each other. It just was, like, dumb. Like, the whole thing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I got yourself into this type of mortgage. Like, who was thinking? And Nobody. And more concerned about, like, oh, no, I can tell. 
So that's why I say I just present the option and I let them come around to reality. I like to present it and let them figure out, man, it don't make sense. Wait a minute. How am I going to do that? And How are you going to do that? I let you figure that out. But it's an option. If you want cash and be done with it, $200,000 on this $320,000 house. You're dang all right. I'll I'll close on it myself. (laughs) But you see what I'm saying? It's not going to do no good to do that because who wants to bring... $80,000 $80,000 to closing to sell their house. That's crazy, but it is an option. I'm not going to take an option away from you because I think it's dumb. Some people will gladly come bring money to closing. I just wouldn't suggest them doing it, but it's up to them to make that decision, not mine. Right. So maybe, I don't know, like I said, maybe they'll go with option two. So what I'm going to do is, I mean, I see this girl every two weeks because she comes to my salon. So um, I'll just keep in touch with her, um, I'll probably just, you know, just kind of keep the conversation going with her um, over the next month or so, and, you know, when they make the move, um, we'll time up. because pretty much, yeah, like, I'll get under, under contract, but you, you like deals like this, like option two. I don't care what the deal is. I like deals. I like real estate. See, but I, I mean, I know that. I knew that when I heard that the, that the house is only a year old. It's the best option for it. Why would you cash out a debt when you're not going? I mean, but she was right with the question she was asking about, you know, what if I want to go get another loan and all of that type of stuff? Because, you know, that is a concern. And you see, I didn't say that you can go get a loan. I say you're going to get a document that shows that your debt is being washed out and your debt-to-income ratio is not going to be out of whack. Now, if she can go get a loan or not, I don't know that. I'm not making that promise. I don't give loans. We ain't got nothing to do with that. Right, but I didn't say it in those ways. And really what I'm trying to do is stay away from their problems. You know what I'm saying? I I, I care because I want to be solution-oriented with what I'm doing, but I'm not trying to get personal with these people at all. Just... You know, like relatable, yes, to connect. And, but and that's the other reason why option three of a, stuff. and that's another reason why option three of a lease is not an option. If you know they going through problems, I don't want to be tied to their problems. I want to buy your house and get you up out of my situation so I can go on and run the rest of this real estate business. You know what I mean? I don't want to be tied to no drama people. And he, like he told me, I might want to come back and get the house later. No, you ain't coming back nothing. Not with me. I'm buying it. I'm, I want the deed. I don't want to do no lease, especially when I know you got problems and that's going why- on. And that's why it's, it's, I hate he owned the house because I just know if I could just only deal with her. I know he the one is really trying to like, I don't, to me, I don't even know why he's even doing all this talking that much, really. Well, his name is on it, but according to her, like, she making these payments, he not making these payments, like, she putting this money down, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is her stuff. This her house. <laughs> she paying for this stuff. Um, and he want money out of it. Like, so I know the back end of it. Like, he want money out of a house he never put money into. And that's why. I mean, I mean that, that, like, and, and you know what? Money? What you just said there, that's an option as well. What does he want out of the house? If she got big money sitting like that in the bank, she can bring that 80000 to close it and pay him ten grand to move on and get out of her life too. If she got that kind of money. I See, know. that's an option. But I ain't going to tell them that because it's their money and their life. But that is an option if that's what it takes to get the job done. <laughs> see, right. see, I could present well, that to her only not with point. him on the phone. <laughs> no, I'm gonna move on and work it. I just some people just emailed me about some leads, so I'm just keeping it moving. Need my phone ringing, and yeah, I'll keep, <laughs> I'll keep it moving. I guess they need a couple of weeks, so you know, yep. I'll just keep it friendly. Perfect, and you got it. Yeah, whenever I hear something from them, I'll I'll call them your way. All right, that'll work. Did you uh, did you learn anything on that phone call? Well, yeah, I did. I told you. See I how much it. stuff they threw at me, and I said, "Bring it on." That's all you got. You got to have some more questions than that. That's all you got. See, I just knock them out, but you got to learn that. You can't try to go in there and try to pitch that stuff when you don't know what you're talking about, because they're gonna thought they're gonna hem you up, and you're gonna be lost. You're gonna be like, "Oh man, I don't know that. I don't know." And I don't, I'm not saying I know all the answers, mm-hmm. but I know to stick to the script. You see how I notice how I just stick to the script, right. no matter how they try to reword it. Talking about, "Oh, you're gonna assume the loan." I ain't never word, used the word assume. No, we're on the whole conversation. Basically, what we're gonna do is make those payments on your behalf. See, when you use the right words and not let them put you into a box of saying you're going to assume the loan and all of this stuff. No, I don't talk like that. The words is the power right. on the phone and on paperwork. Right. Got to use the right words. So important. Nah, that's true because they in a dumb situation anyway. I would 
not do no dumb stuff. This, this was, that was dumb. Like, when I, I learned something from just meeting them to never do something that's stupid. That's stupid. <laughs> Welcome to life. No, I'm so serious. Like, I'm talking about, like, I know we make mistakes for, like, that type of thing. Like, with somebody you ain't, no, 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 no. Not doing that. They'll be filing bankruptcy to, say, to get out of that house before you knew it. But don't do that. So, all right, I'll let you go. All right, so let me know what they say. Thank we'll you. go from thank there. Thank you. Thank you. All thank right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. All right, have a good one. All right, did you all have any questions, comments, concerns before I get up out of here and do some more woke stuff? If you're watching the replay, go ahead and put in the comments what you think about this. Do you think this is something we can create out of thin air? We're trying to save this situation. They're getting a divorce. The guy don't know it, but the lady knows she wants to divorce him. That's why we were talking in code like that. So it's always drama when you're dealing with these houses. It's always some stuff. So that's why I'm like, I'm trying to buy the house. So they got sent a multiple offer strategy. First option was a cash offer. The second offer was a terms offer, meaning we're going to buy the house, get the deed, and take over those payments until some time in the future. The third offer was a lease with an option to buy. And he was all talking about, oh, what about the lease? What about the lease? No, nah, we ain't leasing nothing because I know you're going to get divorced and we don't want to be tied up in that. We want to buy that house and get you out of my picture, out of my life, so I can move on with this real estate business. So let me see if we got any questions in here. Uh, in your mentoring program, do all your contacts come included or is it separate? Contracts, yeah. So all of the contracts, every piece of paperwork, because, you know, real estate breathes piece of paperwork you need to do any type of deal whether it's a wraparound mortgage lease option subject to owner finance any type of stuff all of that paperwork comes with the coaching program as well as weekly calls to hold your hand through each and every deal just like that where we get on the phone with the seller go meet a seller lock up the property do whatever we got to do to get to the finish line that's what comes with the coaching program learn more about that at wokerealestate.com go to the coaching page and it outlines all of that right there clean and black and white WokeRealEstate.com. Good question there. It was a good call. Thank you. Thank you. Do you ever target divorces? Yes. Yes. Divorce, bankruptcy, pre foreclosure, absentee owner, vacant properties. You name it. You got a pain point. Bring it on, baby. I'm here to solve your problem. Big problems mean big profits. Remember that. Death, divorce, any of that type of stuff. Big problems mean big profits. Don't get nobody else to try to take my saying I just came up with, even though it ain't really like nothing new. For those who don't know, my name is Chris Monroe, the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke. We're going to be going live Monday night, 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern, on the Chris Monroe Show on YouTube, at Chris Monroe STL, Monday night, 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. Great call, by the way. Oh, thank you. All right, so I hope you all learned something. Like I said, don't forget to give this video a like, give it a thumbs up. Give it a share if you care. Follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat. That's Twitter. That's Instagram. That's Facebook. That's YouTube. And don't forget, you can get over 100 free videos at WokeRealEstate.com. Right on the homepage. Right when you go to WokeRealEstate.com, it's a playlist right there. Over 100 and, I want to say 110 videos approximately. Free real estate training. Learn all this stuff from the Ruta to the Tuta. Get you some basics down and then come holler at me about the coaching program. Because once you get the basics down, we can twerk it up, tweak it up, get you tuned up so you can get you some deals. Dealing with the death. And I know just living, just of a living brother. Yep. Does he have the authority to sell the house? Yeah, you got to go through probate or whoever it is on this documentation when you're dealing with some death and probate. Depending on your state, depending on how they got it outlined there. It's probably going to be a probate deal. Probably, but you know, I don't know that. I need to know a little more information about that. Hey, please help. So, with all that being said, do what you do, be who hey, you be, help. and I'll see you before you. Mr. I stay. Don't count me out, I stay lit with the news, got a loud mouth.